I grew up just having my ass handed to me all throughout high school for every haircut, every look, every band shirt, walking down the street. You can just walk down the street, you know? You were gonna, I mean, you could, but you had to, it was a statement. <laughs> It was a statement of individuality and a statement of fuck you and I am who I am and you know. What's funny is that I really don't look much different <laughs> than I did. But uh, all those years later, but yeah, it was, I think sometimes the, the current metal scene takes it a little for granted, you know? And I'll see them being like the, the ones that are picking on people, you know, these fucking hipsters and this and that. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be the jocks. Watch the end of, watch the end of Breakfast Club, you know, please. Just Google it, you know? We're all a criminal, we're all a jock, we're all a con. There's big problems out there. Let's let the dress code part go. I'm Mike Scheidt, and I play guitar and lead vocal in Yob. We're currently in Eugene, where I more or less grew up. I actually grew up in Springfield, which is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes away from here. And I spent most of my childhood there, and my latter childhood desperately wanting to get away from it. I moved into Eugene as soon as I could. I had a hardcore band that I played bass and lead vocal in. And that was kind of the beginning of more or less my musical life in a way. I mean, I started playing guitar when I was 15, but and went to shows and uh, went to shows at the Wow Hall. I think I first started going to shows there when I was like 16, so like 87, 88. And I saw, I think the first show I saw there was No Means No. And I saw them a bunch of times there since then, played my first show at the Wild Hall in like 89. And then we just played there two weeks ago, so almost 30 years later, which is pretty cool. One thing that it's interesting to talk about like old times and how you get in a mindset of what those old times were and like how these experiences when they hit us when they're when we're so young and everything is so giant the emotions are giant the need for identity is it's life or death <laughs> when you're a kid you just want it so bad you want your something that you can your place and how that can inform things later on like even seeing like some of the arguments that happen online about music and the fashion and you know beards versus mustaches versus man buns and it, it it immediately triggers me back to a time where when all the crap that was flicked at me was from jocks and cowboys and and people that were truly like we were like the the rebels, you know, were the outsiders in a way. So there was kind of a camaraderie that came with that. But then now fast forward and you have this scene that's become really, becoming more and more a part of popular culture. And now they're the ones that are flicking the crap and it's like, no, don't, don't do it. You know, that's, yeah, we took a long time to get to this spot. Now it's our job from having come from a harder place to try to make it better, <laughs> I think. Well, he was at Briggs Middle School, and he got his ear pierced, and he went to school, and the school, the school just had a fit that he, that he had an earring. And they just thought it was gonna be such a bad influence for him, for the other kids, that he had an earring. So I went down there and, you know, I was just gonna debate it with him as best I could and and I did and he ended up being able to go to school and but it they just felt that things he was doing were just a really bad influence like that. <laughs> 
he was just a real rebel from a really young age. We had a teacher that felt that there was something wrong with him. What I realized, he had been in school for six months and he hadn't learned to read or write or anything. So I went and had a really in-depth meeting with her and she said, well, he was just unable to, she couldn't teach him, that he had all these disabilities and she just couldn't teach him. And I knew that was wrong. I mean, I just knew it. He always had just a different way of learning. And she didn't want to take the time. And so I got the, the principal to take the time to take him under her wing. And in six weeks, she had him surpassing what they had done. I felt like for a long time, I had to always do that with him. I always had to fight to get what I knew that he could do. I just always knew that he had this uniqueness about him, that he wasn't stupid. And in fact, if anything, because they had done a, they had done a, um, a study on him, and then he, they said he was at genius level. We had a counselor one time when we were doing counseling with Mike, and they had said that with a child, um, that it doesn't matter if it's varsity chess, find their passion. Whatever it is, find out what their passion is. And for Mike, it was music, and it was acting, and it was drama, and it was writing, and my other boys, it was athletics. So that was great. I didn't care what it was. I really didn't care. It was whatever it was that turned them on and made them get up in the morning and go, yes. It's hard. When you're, at, when you're athletic, you know, it, that's highly accepted in our society, but not when you're an artist. It's harder. A lot of punk came through Eugene, not metal so much, though I did see some fairly big shows at the fairgrounds, but a lot of punk bands came through here. Raw Power, Poison Idea, DOA, Corrosion Conformity, DRI many times. Music was part of the identity and punks and metalheads did not agree, didn't get along. Uh, New Wave, that was like an outsider thing, didn't really get along either, but being from a small town, and being one of the only kind of metal punk kids, there just wasn't a lot of places for me to go. And there was, New Wave was much more on the radar. So there was this group of guys that were, you know, guys and girls that were all New Wave. And they just accepted me, even though I was like the only Hesher. And it was just, that was where I was gonna hang out. And, and I was really big into all of that too. Um, you know, and remain very big into it. New Order and Depeche Mode and, any of those, you know, there's so many bands that are such a big deal to me um, from the 80s, you know, Duran Duran and all the 80s Bowie stuff. So I was into all of that, but I was into all the punk and I was also like in shop class making Black Sabbath plaques, but with my hair every color and spiked out, you know, because I was big into the breakfast club, so had to have a trench coat and fingerless gloves. And so, yeah, it was kind of hard to grow up in this town. <laughs> <laughs> got it from all sides. You know, I'm also grateful to be from here and I'm still from here and now it's interesting to travel all over the world and see a lot of amazing places and yeah when I come back here it does still feel like home.